Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, we have a very interesting Facebook live session today uh, with none other than Ustaz Amin Yusof. Uh, today, we're going to have a conversation in Ramadan, but it's going to be a lecture style. Uh, the topic will be, you will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. Ustaz Amin, uh, Muhammad Yusof, he studied in Rubat Tarim to learn Islamic sciences under the renowned scholar Habib Salim Ashatri. May Allah bless him. He learned Quran memorization at Abu Muraim Institute in Tarim. And then uh, Ustaz Amin returned and now conducts classes and delivers lectures in Singapore. Uh, inshallah, we we'll, uh, would like to invite Ustaz to begin on his uh, lecture. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin abdullu salata wa taslim. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam al tasliman kithira. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allam tana innaka anta al-alimul hakim. فَرَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَ تَمَّ لِسَانِ يَفْكَوْ كَوْلِ أَمَّا بَعْدُ Alhamdulillah, Christus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We're about a week away from the Eid al-Fitri And we want to wish everyone That was the last ten nights of Ramadan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam strive To itikaf in masjid But however, during this condition Which is not allowed to itikaf in masjid. However, the next alternative will be to itikaf in our houses, filling it with ibadah and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to see and also to get the blessings of Laylatul Qadar, inshallah. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. So Alhamdulillah, today our lecture is regarding about not walking alone. When we were born in this world, you see that we were born through this world with a wasilah, right? with the intermission of a father and a mother. Although we have them around, and then we have siblings around, that at times when we grow up, we felt alone. With all the companions that we have, they might not be thinking the same as what we wanted to be or even the objective in life that we have for ourselves. For example, your companions might not be supporting you in something that you believe in, or you believe in something that your companions or friends do not believe in. So at times, because of these situations, we feel alone. So Alhamdulillah, through the blessings of Ramadan and the history of Ramadan, we will see that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, before he became a prophet and a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used to be alone. Alone here has two meanings. Alone that he was not able to accept the belief of the people of Quraysh at that point of time where they were, they were worshipping idols. Secondly, he wanted to be alone that he only wanted have time only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we see in the seerah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah used to be alone in the cave of Hira where the first revelation came to him so it's very important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times has chosen his servants just for himself we can see Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be in the cave of Hira. Certain ulama says that he was there for three nights, and times was for seven nights, and times was for 14 nights. What was this all about? Why was he alone there before his family, before his friends? Because he wanted to be alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because with that alone, that you find solitude, you find serenity in your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too, that when he revealed the verses of Psalm uh, or the verses regarding fasting, that there's a verse <coughs> involved. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Quran, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa'inni qarib. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, Ya Muhammad, O Prophet Muhammad, whom of you who ask about me, please tell them that I am close to them. So this is a good reason 
that at all times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always close to us at all times. In fact, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically says hablu warid that mentions that it is the closest to us even with the vein that is your neck because this is the closest to you. So how do we feel close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Firstly, we need to give time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly, as you can see, that there is time for your family, there is time for work, there is time for your friendship, there is time for your hobbies. Now is the time that we need to give time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made certain things, commandments important to Him that we need to fulfill, like our five times prayers a day. That is some of the time that we should put aside to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though when we are praying in congregation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that indeed we are actually being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't bring our parents, our companions, our family in our prayers, that we are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one way of someone putting his time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in prayers. Prayers are divided into two, the compulsory ones as well as the sunnah, sunnah ones. You can see that during the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the rewards for those performing prayers to him. Those who pray in congregation during the month of Ramadan is rewarded 70 times compared to 27 times during other months. And then we see that during this month, it becomes a speciality for this month to for perform Taraweh prayers only for the month of Ramadan. So you can see that during this month alone, that we perform a lot of prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, that indeed, Salat, when you make protection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the main aim is to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one way, of someone <clears throat> trying to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should value his praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He should decide proper time to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, he should also make some time to increase his praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, he always used to ask Bilal, is it the time for the prayers yet? Bila said, no, Ya Rasulullah, is there a revelation that comes to pray now? He said, no. Indeed, I am now in waiting to talk to my Lord. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam misses talking to his Lord. And he talks to his Lord or talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his prayers. As well, once he was doing his night prayers, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, his wife was saying that Rasulullah was making a lot of position along of sujud. Uh, in fact, that there was a time when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha thought that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away, right? But after he finished the prayers, Aisha asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, why was indeed your position was very long? And indeed your sujud was very long. And then he answered, because I long to talk with my Lord. So in processions and in sujud in the prayers, you can see that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam use that opportunity to talk to him. In fact, we find it very embarrassing or it's very difficult to talk with someone and it's very easy to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to talk because there's no, there's no reason not to because there's nothing or no topics that you, you can't talk to. At times, you're embarrassed to talk to your parents, to your friends, to your companions or even to your mentors on certain topics. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the topic is limitless. You can talk to him for any topics you like. You can talk about your job. You can talk about your family problems. You can talk about your marriage. You talk about your future. You talk about your weaknesses. There are a lot of things that you talk about. And awliya and the saints of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use this opportunity in prayers to always talk to or communicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most, one of the most important time for someone to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is towards night prayers or the last third part of the night. It is known throughout that it becomes part of a messenger and a prophet life 
to live the third part of the night in ibadah and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself towards the last third night of the of the night that he asked where are my servants asking for for, for my forgiveness where are my servants asking for my needs and wants and where are my servants who wants to be close to me so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us and that is the reason where he wants to talk to us so it's very important to use the appropriate time besides just the normal prayers to talk to him and Imam Shafi rahimullah ta'ala indeed that I choose the best time to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my tahajjud prayers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact says in the Quran وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّدَ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَا أَسَا أَيَّ بَأَثَ رَبُّكُمْ مَقَامٍ مَمْهُودًا Indeed towards the end of the night that someone performs two raka'at of tahajjud it becomes uh, a sunnah that's something that is rewarding for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah increases the rank for those who perform these prayers so there are a few things that you can do firstly is to start to pray and secondly to increase the prayers and thirdly the appropriate time which is to fill the last third night of worship or prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secondly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mentions regarding the verses that is revealed for fasting for example we see that the verse that i mentioned before that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qarib allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that ya muhammad if any one of you who asked about me and then if they were if they were to ask about me tell them that i'm close to them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued in that verse. Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi fa'inni qarib ujibu da'wata da'a'i idha da'ali fal yastajibu li wal yu'minu bi da'alaum yarshudu. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that I'm close to him, secondly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to ask, to supplicate to him, to ask for our needs and wants to him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I'm going to give to my servant. So indeed, you can separate between fasting in the month of Ramadan as well as supplicating and asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your needs and wants. So by making supplication and doa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's also one way of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So indeed, you are not alone. By saying and asking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to what we need and we want. In that, in the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Quran, Ud'uni astajib lahu. Ask for me and in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our needs and wants. So one of the best time to ask to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to remind of Ramadan. So I believe so that many of us, a certain of us has challenged during this time. This is a very difficult time. Some of us have lost their job. Some of us have lost their income. Some of us have lost their stress. Some of us just have difficulty continuing our routine life. So talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are not alone. Use this opportunity of this month of Ramadan to be close to him. Make lots of du'a. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoys listening to certain people. One of the voices that enjoys is one who asking for forgiveness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use this opportunity of the month of Ramadan to ask and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose name is Imam Jalaluddin Rumi rahimallahu ta'ala. I mean, if you go to his, um, his maqam, his maqbara in Turkey, there's a, there's a verse from his words of wisdom that says, come as you are, come again and again. And this is a great encouragement for us that whatever situation or whatever deeds that we have done, good or bad, that always to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Quran, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. That indeed all our deeds are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all deeds, good or bad, to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left those who purify themselves and all those who return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So seek forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making dua to him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed he enjoys the servant who is asking for forgiveness from him. During the month of Ramadan, we are greatly encouraged daily. In fact, we recite this dua daily before our break iftar and so throughout the day. Allah ma'inna ka'afuun to hib pul afwa fa'afu anna indi o Allah forgiveness of all our sins that we have performed. In fact, that was the deed. That was also the doa that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam teaches Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha when she asked, Ya Rasulullah, what are the doas that I should recite and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I met the night of Laylatul Qadr? And then Rasulullah repeated and Rasulullah answered, Ya Aisyah, recite this doa. Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna three times. So you see that this is one of the most greatest opportunity that we live so that we have seen big time. That we have seen throughout the 11 months that this is the time to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one is ever forgiven than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't believe that you are alone here. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always waiting for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for your first recitation of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for your first rakat of salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you to do good deeds for his sake. So you are always on the, on the waiting list of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that we are should be happy for. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always lead us to heaven. He do not like to lead his slaves to the hellfire. So make a lot of du'a because by making du'a Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a way of being closer to Him. And also if you look in the month of Ramadan, there are many important battles that happen during the month of Ramadan. One of the most important that happened during the month of Ramadan was the battle of Badar. You know that was the greatest battle they ever fought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. There was a verse also called the surah that was mentioned as the word the surah of al-badar however if you look into throughout the quran you won't find surah al-badar what i mentioned here surah badar the surah al-anfal the surah al-anfal was mentioning about the battle of badar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has grand victory to the muslims in that battle however our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam during the night of the battle he was up all night Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Wajah was saying that indeed I see most of the companions who have slept. However, I was seeing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in standing and I could see from his stand that he was saying Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum and he was continuous for the for three days that they were in battle. Right? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even though Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has grand victory to the Muslims by the verse Allah subhanahu mentions وَلَقَدْ نَصْرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرِ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّهِ Ini Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given victory to the people who fought in Badar to the Muslims but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is trying to get a confidence from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he wasn't very complacent that although victory was already justified but he is always asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give that strength. Right? So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before the battle badar, that was what he did throughout this night, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Allah, Rasulullah mentions in hadith, ad-du'a mukhul ibadah. That indeed, a supplication to Allah is like the brain. And we know that a human being can function without the brain. And the brain plays a very important functions in our human life. In the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to teach us to always make dua. In fact, in a hadith Qudsi, if a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no needs and wants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Allah will destroy all these creations and Allah will create a new creations that this creation was always in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mashallah. So ask to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask what is good for you, ask what is good for your future, what is good for your family, as what is good for your for siblings, as what good for your community, as what is good for your dunya, as well in the year after. So by making the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one should know that never one is alone in this dunya. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always 
whenever a slave is in surah hadid allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one who created the heavens and the earth that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's ever living and he will last at the same time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always wherever where we are so there's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's always no cutting off if you look into human being he's always there's always tiredness there's always uh time constraint for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa hayyu ya qayyum la ta'khutuhu sinatun wa la naum that in the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't feel any sleepiness or needs to rest allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at 24 7 hotline for us so be always even if you're shy enough to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a prayer mat ask to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a heart so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens in whatever languages that we have. That even when even you, you have a need, or even asking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens. Thirdly, besides making prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increasing them and making a lot of dua, trying to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing that you're not alone, that He's opening the door for you to always connect to Him. Thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to teach us that true recitation of Al-Quran is a way of connecting to Him. Indeed, Al-Quran is revealed as shifa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Quran, inna hadha al-Quran yahdi lillati hiya akwam wa yubashirul mu'minin alladhina ya'malun salihati an lalu ajaran kabira. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this Al-Quran as guidance for us. Guidance for us as well as a deed for us to perform and to recite. Because the recitation of Quran has big deeds in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At times, Ibn Masud was asked, Oh dear Ibn Masud, Ibn Masud was known to someone who was given a lot of knowledge <clears throat> by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That is one of those best knowledge of Tafsir, Fige. I even know a lot of prophetic traditions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So a companion came to him after the death of Prophet Muhammad and he said, Ya Ibn Mas'ud, I have a lot of stress in my life. I don't feel well. I can't sleep well. Is there anything that you can advise me? And then Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an advises to recite a lot of Quran. So here he means here a lot of Quran. If you can recite, then listen to them. If you can listen to them, look and understand them. So various ways where we can take advantage of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a way for us to communicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also in a way to find certain things, secrecy that Allah keep in the Quran. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us about adab and akhlaq in the Quran how to show adab and akhlaq towards your parents, adab and akhlaq towards your wife, towards your family, and how to give the appropriate guidance to your siblings as well to your offsprings. So these are no knowledge that has been taught in the Quran. The Al-Quran also teaches us as a way, as a deed, to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or just to connect to Him indirectly. Even when we do not know the verses that we recite, because every word of Quran is kalam Allah, which is the wisdom and words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulama-ulama tafsir says that during the time of the Prophet till now, the tafsir Quran is limitless, is endless. That there's, there's no stopping to understand the Quran. In fact, if we were to live till the end of time, that there won't be enough knowledge to actually tafsir the whole of Quran. Because there's always new knowledge that is revealed by Al-Quran at all times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a verse, Wafi sama iris hukum. Indeed, if you look into the sky, there is your provisions. So during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you look into the sky, you're thinking about rain because most of the uh, workers or most of the companies were earning through farming. However, now it's not just farming. If you look into the heavens, you'll find that some of our companions and peers are working as pilots. 
as tools, as logistics, as career services. Many of them are earning provisions through the sky. So as you can see, the there's no limitations to the knowledge that's been revealed by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Quran. Maybe it could be your problems in life that could be settled through the Quran. If you look into the Quran, just choose any verse, just choose any surah that your heart feel like, feel like reading and looking through the meanings and pondering to meanings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you guidance, give you the strength to go through this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us. So inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the last 10 nights of Ramadan be known that we are not always alone because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is there for us. Allah himself mentioned the Quran in Surah Rahman, Kullum man alayha fa'an wa yabaqa wa jurubbika dhul jalali wal ikram. Indeed, everything will go except for the one that is everlasting, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pray that hopefully we will get the blessings of Laylatul Qadar. Strive to fill up the last 10 days and 10 nights to get the blessings of Laylatul Qadar. And this is the remaining days, which is quite sad because ulama-ulama says these are the time where the devils are not there. These are the time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is karim. This is the time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever forgiving. That it is the time that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ever generous. So use the remaining days. We have about six days left <clears throat> to get the blessing from Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who are close to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our supplications in Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our love and those are accepted their supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I would like to use this opportunity to wish everyone a good eat, inshallah, in a week's time. Uh, even though we are not able to visit our family, relatives and friends, remember during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it was when during the time of Eid that they had to prepare for battle called Ahzab. So we have no battle to, to prepare. Our battle is just to stay at home and keep our family safe, inshallah. I think that will be the, the enough battle. However, we can live in that day with takbir during the night of uh, Eid and also during the day, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this month of Ramadan. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, Ustaz. Thank you so much for your dars. Assalamualaikum, Ustaz. Waalaikumsalam. Salam. Okay, alhamdulillah. Ustaz, uh, we go to the question and answer, yeah, Ustaz? Okay, inshallah. Yeah, bismillah. Ustaz, uh, someone asking first question. Pasal, uh, I mean, today's topic is uh, <laughs> today's topic is you never walk alone. So yes. I think there's a difference you mentioned about being lonely and uh, solitude. Um, and the person is asking, how do we overcome the worry of being left alone? Okay, the worrying is already alone, <laughs> right? So you know that by worrying, really is uh, making you alone. Mm. So there are certain uh, so-called antidote that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, right? To keep the worrying away. We call it ham. Ya farjal ham, ya kashif al ham, ya man li abdeh wa yakfir wa ham. So, worrying will be part of life. One should understand it. The day that we were born, and until the day that we leave the world, worrying will be part of life, right? So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually give us a medicine to stay away about worrying is to live or so-called leave your matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the medicine he enjoys us to, to recite was to recite La hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim hundred times after your subuh prayers. You leave all matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are a lot of things to worry. You have to worry about your marriage. You have to worry about your offspring, your siblings, your parents, your job. Even when EPL will start again, there's a lot of things to worry. You know, so uh, keep the worrying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just focus on what you can do and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and inshallah, it will make your life less stressful, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, there are a lot of things to worry about. Eh? What's that? Yes. <laughs> um, okay, we'll start. Next question. Um, why do we tend to lose the momentum, we'll start? Uh, because our iman increase in Ramadan, but after that, we feel after Ramadan, we feel that like it decreased. What tip could you give us to be consistent and continue on the momentum? 
Uh, by not being consistency shows that our weaknesses, right? True, indeed, uh, humans are all creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, weak. Uh, in fact, there's a saying in Arabic that says, Istiqamah khairu min alfi karamah. That being inconsistency is better than having thousand karamah, even though you don't pray in the, in the most of istiqamah every day. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yes, it's very difficult. But you see, the reward here is so-called, uh, you wouldn't say trying to come up. When you are down, for example, you used to recite Surah Muluk every night. Right? Mm. Surah Muluk every night. After the third month, then you go Bandung for three days, you totally forgot about Surah Muluk altogether. Right? Mm. Or you go Melaka for three days. You know, is the ikan yeah. bakar, no Surah Muluk. <laughs> right? So the reward is not leaving it. The reward is how do you go back to your footpath so far. Right? So that's the difficult part, right? Yeah. Uh, so as you can see, the difference between us and those scholars and the saints of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have went through a lot of training. And they have understood which is good and which is bad. Right? For us, it's always all good. There's no bad. <laughs> right? We felt that life is everything. So at times, you know, we try to find shortcuts. At times, we, we fall to our nafas and our shahwat. Yeah. Right? So my only uh, advice here for those to be in history coma is not to be let down when you are away for the path for a while. For example, when I said that you leave reciting Surah Mulk for three days, four days, five days, you know, Shaitan will be whispering to you and say, you know, this is what happened. I think you just leave it all together. No. Uh, so be like what uh, Imam Rumi said as his makam, come back again, come back again, whatever you are. So that means that even when you are let off, never felt that, you know, this is a stumbling block for you not to continue. Continue as it is. Yeah. Uh, Ustaz, we have uh, one question, Alhamdulillah. Uh, the question is asking, you know, in uh, man of Ramadan, the common dua we always make is, Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbul afu Could you, um, could you advise us why is it that this dua is made a lot in the man of Ramadan? The reason being in Ramah Ramadan, right, it was mentioned here, as you know that the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great in the man of Ramadan. He forgives everyone, you know, he increases our rewards, you know, that he grant all our wishes. So, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us, for the last 11 months, we have not been thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In terms of the time that has been given to us, in terms of what we had, right? So by that, we are always in, in, in a sin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in a way of to cut out so-called our, our, our misdeed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So which is so-called appropriate. 11 months, you have, made, mm. you have not been praying with it, for example, and then Ramadan you start to pray with it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgetting the last previous 11 months. That, oh, oh Allah, that I, you know, I'm not been keeping up to what has been met, right? The standard is not there. It's only for Ramadan, right? The mm. 11 months, the Quran is full of dust. The Ramadan, mashallah, right? So in fact, this is appropriate doa that has been taught by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlike humankind, have feelings. So, you know, he just forgets everything. That's the nice thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't remember like unlike of us. You know, you remember some bad debt that you have with your friends. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't remember bad debts. He just forgives everyone. Inshallah. <laughs> Beautiful reminder of that, uh, that Allah is not like us. Uh, Allah will always forgive us, you know. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, which links to the next question. Uh, Ustaz, you know, you mentioned in Makam Rumi, uh, there's that quote, come, come again, come, yeah. come back again and again. Yeah. I think uh, some, some of us, uh, they're asking, uh, you know, what advice do you have if we only feel that we're only picking out our Ramadan now? You know, we feel that all this time, we feel that we've wasted our time or because of work, we're tired or we feel that we have so many sins and, you know, what can we do if we're, what, we feel that, you know, the remainder days of Ramadan, uh, what can we do in this time uh, to kind of like, uh, seek Allah's forgiveness. Well, the good start is uh, admittance, right? The first start, uh, the good thing that is uh, someone who wants to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be better is admittance. He knows that all this while that he has not been keeping to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to be. So like what we said, come back again, come back again, we only have about six days left. Maybe the first 24 days, you have not been doing travel prayers. You have not been reciting the Quran. You have not doing what is been told. You'll be busy with cooking. You'll be busy with, you know, preparing for it. 
So the last six days is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says that the last ten days he is more ever forgiving. That he releases many people from the hellfire, especially the last ten days of Ramadan. That shows how ever forgiving that he was. So my my advice here is start to touch the Quran. Now if you you can recite, start to re- to listen to Quran. If you go to YouTube, there's a lot of sheikh that you can recite. They have beautiful uh, recitation of Quran that simply can move you around. They're very beautiful verses and surah. You can recite Surah Rahman. Is ever touching. Surah Awakia is ever touching. Surah Yasin is ever touching. There's a lot of Hadra, there's a lot of Hailala, there's a lot of Maulid Dibai, a lot of Kasida to make you remember our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you can listen to the battles. Uh, you don't have to read books now. You just go to YouTube and just you know type Battle Uhud or Battle Badar and Battle Fatuh Makkah, and listen to them. So this is the least that you can do. Fill up your remaining time for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If you have wealth. Please give some of them for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So there are a lot of ways to be close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the remaining days. Our Prophet gave us a lot of uh, encouragements. Tarika ilallah kal ada dan ufus. That the way to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is like, is like how you breathe. There's no, it's like you make seventy breaths in a in a in a minute. So if you have more wealth, give some of it. You know, if you have uh, knowledge, give some to it. You have time, make the proper time. So, for example, you see that those people who give away porridge, there are those people mm. who cook, yeah. there are those people who give food to the frontliners, there are those who donate, there are those who make a lot of zakat, there are those people who help the neighbors. You know, there are a lot of things that you can do for the sake of Allah Subhanahu. You know, just recite the Quran and do throw away or just recite, you know prayers and so forth. Islam is so wide, right? You ask yourself, what is your strength? That the strength that is given by you, that is the strength from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to do good for mankind. So use that uh, correctly and appropriately. The rest of these six days, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala forgive all of us. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala grant all of you what you have wanted all this while. Inshallah. Amin. Amin. Inshallah. Start the next question. Asking. Start. What's the best zikir to read uh, when someone uh, betray you uh, for you to remain calm? Yeah. So for example, we have betrayal in the Quran. You see Surah Yusuf. You see betrayal for siblings. Mm. Yeah. Not only for siblings from Zulaikha, you know, then from the people. So one of the best uh, zikir that someone can recite when in terms of betrayal to be close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The three zikir that I will I will actually recommend the first zikir to increase La Ilaha Illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Why that ini that it could be that betrayal is a test from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Nabi Yusuf AS is tried by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Nabi Yunus is tried by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is all part of betrayal. Nabi Ibrahim AS is betrayed by his own kaum. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is betrayed by his own tribe, by his own family, by his own uncles. So always increases La Ilaha Illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Secondly, to increase this uh, zikir La Ilaha Illa Anta Subhanaka Inni Kuntu Min Al Zalimin La Ilaha Illa Anta Subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimin. And thirdly, the zikir that make you become within yourself is to increase your salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. So inshallah, with these three zikirs, he will make you calmer. He will make you inshallah uh, strong, right? Uh, never retaliate because that's now Islam is our Prophet for 14 years before the battle of Badar did not retaliate. Even when he was his head was stabbed, when he was making procession to Allah, mm. his uh, his when he was making procession to Allah, people were throwing you know all the feces to over him. Fatima Tuzara was crying and so forth. But indeed, believe that our day will come. Mashallah, Ustaz, very beautiful. So, kalima uh, shahada. Uh, Laila anta subhana ka ini kuntum na zalimin and salawat. Salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thank you so much, Ustaz. Uh, Ustaz, uh, I guess this will be the last question, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, <laughs> uh, because we're going to have a break faster, also, Ustaz. Uh, yeah, I don't inshallah. want to take much of your time. Uh, Ustaz, yeah. next question is asking more about uh, munajat. Uh, how yeah. how is it that they can have that intimacy and closeness with Allah uh, in the last third of the night? When we talking about munajat, <clears throat> there are few ways to 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 doing about it. So I would say that to get the right munajat is like having the right frequency. You know, if you playing around with the 
in the radio if you don't get the right frequency you just won't even get to the right station you go to the wrong stations so my 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 advice is in munajat is like you have been asking for this thing the munajat that you need to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for quite some time i keep it to yourself and you're saving it for this one particular night that you're gonna ask to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so wake up towards the last third of the night right and then have a good shower take a wudu and then before you start munajat you pray two rakat of wudu and then so, two rakat of tahajud and then you do two rakat of hajat before asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse yourself through istighfar astaghfirullahaladzim astaghfirullahaladzim 100 times 200 times 300 istighfar here is to get the right frequency so to know your current status with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we just nobody in 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 so-called his field Right, so we want to go into his special, uh, so-called garden. You need to enter the garden. You must be cleansed, right? Mm. Hundred times, so hundred. How much until you feel that you are a nobody, that your need will only be uh, accepted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is able to help you and no one else. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. And then when you ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you raise your hand with a low voice. That when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a low voice, you're asking in humility. You know, when you go, for example, my experience, uh, for those who used to go KL, there's Pudu Raya. You know, when you go Pudu Raya, there's a lot of beggars. You see, when the beggars are asking for money, they will raise their hand up. That point, they are asking knowingly or unknowing whether they get any money or not, but still they will ask appropriately. So ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appropriately with a low voice. And then with the wasila of uh, salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then when you ask for munajat to Allah subhanahu wa taala, always ask about your weaknesses. Always tell about your weaknesses. Hmm. Oh Allah, I'm dumb. Oh Allah, I'm weak. Oh Allah, I'm non legible Oh Allah, I'm this and that and that. Yeah. You know, even though you have seven degrees, even though you are the CEO of the company, he said, in hmm. front of the palace of Allah, you are a nobody. Allah. The one who raised is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So by that point in time, you are closing to the frequency. Once you get the frequency, when you ask about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a very, very high chance that you yourself will feel serenity, that you feel the sense of uh, connection. That when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that tears overflow automatically. Without acting, this is no drama mama. But this is when you are really in need in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the best time because we don't have devil to play around with your ears, devil to play around with your, your hearts. And every night is now is a very important night. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wabil mustaghfiri nabil ashar. That in it during the time of suhur, sahur, a lot of people are asking forgiveness for Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. So that will keep me actually uh, motivated to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see, even if you're shy, that you're afraid that you make monajah, that your peers will be listening to you, your spouses be listening, make that doa in your last sujud to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no one knows. Uh, no one knows that you actually want the bungalow with 17 rooms. No one knows. No one knows that actually you wanted that girl. Uh, no one knows that you actually wanted that best job. No one knows that you are at loss right now. So that is the point, that the munajat. What you mean munajat here? Yeah. That you really connect. Inaja. Munajat to Allah subhanahu wa If you can connect, that's not munajat. MashaAllah. Uh, very beautiful answer, Ustaz, about um, that connection and the intimacy, you know, building on that. Uh, it's like a secret between lovers, eh, Ustaz. The yeah. Way, the way you so if lovers, you cannot be known. Only lover to lover. MashaAllah. Very beautiful. <laughs> you never walk alone, yeah, Ustaz? MashaAllah. <laughs> Next month, inshallah. Next month, inshallah. <laughs> I think uh, Sidi Khalid will be very happy to talk with yeah. you about that. <laughs> inshallah alhamdulillah thank you so much Ustaz may Allah bless inshallah. you uh, Amin. may Allah grant you good health inshallah we Amin. can benefit from your from your class uh, um, inshallah may Allah accept our Ramadan and purify our inshallah. hearts thank Amin. you so inshallah. much uh, Ustaz can you have a closing dua for us before we end uh, is it iftar dua uh, Allahumma barik <laughs> <laughs>
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahillahi rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli ala sayidina Muhammadin wa fatihi lima ghulwi wa lakhati lima sabaka. Nasiril haqq bil haqq wal hadi ila siratikal mustaqim wa ala ali haqqa qadrihi wa miqdaril azim. Allahumma inna kafun tuhibbul afwa fa afwanna. Allahumma inna kafun tuhibbul afwa fa afwanna. Allahumma inna kafun tuhibbul afwa fa afwanna ya karim. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ridhaka wal janna wa na'udzu bika min sakatika wan nar. Allahumma rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayyi lana min amrina rashada. Allahumma atmi lana nurana wa waqfil lana innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir Allahumma la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna minadh dhalibin Allahumma ja'alna minat tawwabin wa ja'alna minal mutatahhirin wa ja'alna min ibadikal salihin Allahumma rabbana taqabbal minna siyamana wa salatana wa ruku'ana wa sujudana wa salatana wa qur'ana wa kullu 'amalin salih ilayka ya arhamar rahimin ya akramal akramin ya fattah ya alim Allahumma inna nas'alukal afiyah wal mu'afata da'ima fi ad-dini wa ad-dunya wal akhirah Allahumma asina kibatana fil umuri kulliha wa ajirna min khid dunya wa adha bil akhirah bi rahmatika ya rahman rahmin ya akraman akramin ya fatahu ya alim wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa maulana muhammadi abdullu salata wa taslim wa ala alihi wa sallallahu sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin amin ya rabbil alamin amin kum takubah ya karim thank you so much Ustaz insyaAllah Allah bless you insyaAllah till next time insyaAllah insyaAllah waalaikumsalam assalamualaikum Ustaz waalaikumsalam Alhamdulillah. Um, uh, yeah, we just had a very beautiful session, Mr. Amin, uh, and uh, we hope that it's a beneficial for everyone. Uh, you guys can watch this video back if you missed the live. Uh, and um, yeah, that was on uh, You'll Never Walk Alone and very beautiful uh, Dars by Ustad. Uh, with that, uh, we actually have uh, another session tonight, inshallah. It will be uh, uh, with Shia Abdul Aziz. So that's happening about 9.30, inshallah. Uh, on uh, the 40 principles of the religion. So do check that out. Uh, we have a lot of FB Live lectures coming up next week as well. Uh, do check out the schedule. And uh, with that, please pray for us and our volunteers. May Allah accept our Ramadan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh.